Seven and FIBA America's Championship. The USA National Team continues their quest for qualification into the 2008 Olympic Games. After taking care of business against Venezuela last night, the USA looks to keep on rolling tonight. Some new but familiar faces headline this team as they try to improve upon recent international results. The U.S. Virgin Islands providing the challenge tonight as blue play continues. Strip of Las Vegas, Nevada, a glow at night, a place where extravagance is the norm. Tonight it's about extravagance and basketball excellence on the basketball court. The Virgin Islands taking on the United States. A look at the pool standings of note today. Argentina, the defending Olympic champs, winning their first game of the tournament. And also Canada winning today. Puerto Rico bouncing back with a win as well over Panama. Here's what's at stake. Over the next 10 days, these 10 teams will play over 40 total games. When the dust settles, two teams will get first to the Olympic Games less than a year away in Beijing. And Kobe Bryant celebrating his 29th birthday today. The birthday boy, just one of three big cogs in the huge wheel of success last night. Bryant making a very auspicious debut for Team USA. Always a great idea, Mark, to play it well on the eve of your birthday. Kobe Bryant kicking the ball ahead. LeBron James unstoppable in transition. But with Carmelo Anthony's relentless attack on the offensive glass, the team from the United States was able to completely dominate following up with spectacular plays that led to crowd-pleasing finishes at the hoop. And the numbers for Carmelo Anthony, Kobe Bryant, and LeBron James, particular attention to the top line, very limited minutes, and in the turnover, you have to play 10 games in 12 days. Coach Krzyzewski's gonna need these guys throughout. Their numbers were more than enough to rout Venezuela. A portrait of efficiency, those three. Meanwhile, a face for the Virgin Islands that a lot of collegiate fans in the United States will recognize. Carl Krauser are going to be playing the point position for the Virgin Islands tonight. Krauser, out of pit, led his school to four appearances in the NCAA tournament, a very feisty competitor. The New York City native who also spent a lot of time in the Bronx has spent some time as an amateur boxer. This is the guy that they're going to be counting on for the Virgin Islands to try to slow down this express from the United States. The Virgin Islands, they'll have their work cut out for them tonight, Mark. Okay, let's take a look at our starting lineups presented by State Farm for the United States. It's the exact same starting five as a night ago. Jason Kidd and Kobe Bryant in the backcourt. LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony on the wings, and Dwight Howard getting the nod in the middle tonight. Once again, he had 12 points and 8 rebounds last night. Meanwhile, a guy that we're going to have to keep an eye on for the United States Virgin Islands, Frank Eligar, the six foot nine inch 20 year old in the middle, has been the team's leading scorer of late. Mark Eligar is the one player on this Virgin Island team that the United States coaching staff thinks at one time in the future will have a chance to play in the NBA. Eligar, just 20 years of age. They're a little bit undersized though up front. Here's a look at some of the significant differences between NBA basketball and international basketball. They play four 10-minute quarters in international FIBA basketball. The court is actually a little bit shorter, and of course they use the trapezoid-shaped lane as opposed to the rectangle, which we see so often in the NBA. And that trapezoid-shaped lane is, through, is 71 square feet larger in international competition the goaltending rule which allows players from either team to swipe the ball off the rim once it hits the rim unlike the goaltending rules from the 1950s which allowed players to actually go up through the rim and knock it out that is no longer legal thank goodness that's part of the game the FIBA game that Kobe Bryant and his teammates are still getting acclimated to it's tough to break out of those old commitment that they made to the USA basketball program and here back good on the turnaround here's red Michael red had a very productive night had 17 last night Carmelo feeling it the United States leading 34 to 11 at stake here two spots 
to the Olympic Games when the dust settles on September the 2nd. The United States has never... The United States won by 58 points without Ken Duncan. But my sense, I was part of He was a little self-conscious, didn't want to play against his countrymen. I think, it's, so. I think it's a tremendous gesture to say, hey, look, that's my country, and I don't want to go out there and pound them. But my sense is that Tim Duncan did not have a good time at the Athens Olympics. Yeah. for the Athens games just three years ago. So I knew that wonderful rotten trivia was just around the bend. USA leading 32 to 9. And in a very staunch man defense still. Edwin's jump shot is off the mark, rebounded by Carmelo Anthony. The United States doing a nice job on both ends. The offensive and defensive boards of Michael Red electing to drive into the bucket that time, and he's fouled on his foray to the cup. And all of these players who never went to college, they should be personally thanking Spencer Hill, maybe even giving them part of it. They're I know where you're going on Because this. he's the guy in 1971 when he sued the NBA to allow the underclassmen, because there used to be a rule that before 1971 and the successful lawsuit by Spencer Hill that you had to have gone to four years of college before you could enter the NBA. And my, how things have changed. <laughs> Michael Red, meanwhile, knocks down the free throw. Red averaged almost 27 points a game this year with the Milwaukee Bucks and already has 12 points. The meter's still running with 2.17 to go here in the first quarter. But Michael suffered that devastating left knee injury last season. There was a meaningless dunk he threw down with only 14 seconds to go against Cleveland and LeBron in early January in a game that was already decided they were losing badly by nine points and he went to throw it down and he strained that patella tendon in his left knee. So it sure seems fine right now. His stroke's okay. Mike Miller, another dead-eye shooter in the ball game, and Virgin Islands finally getting a bucket. That was Jameel Haywood, the 6'6", 30-year-old who averaged 5.6 points a game in the recent Pan Am competition. LeBron taking a break on the sidelines. The United States leading 34 to 11. At stake here, two spots to the Olympic Games when the dust settles on September the 2nd. The United States has never lost in FIBA America's championship. Michael Red driving that time and he's fouled by Carl Krauser. There's Carl Krauser who played at Pitt for four years. Out of the Bronx, New York. You, know, you think back to some of the the days when the college guys used to play against some of the other countries, Bill. And I remember watching a game in particular, 1976, Butch Lee lighting up the United <laughs> States. And I'm saying to myself, I don't remember Butch Lee being Puerto Rican when he was playing for Marquette, but he had roots in that country. The eligibility rules are always nebulous <laughs> in international competition. And while Tim Duncan was born in the Virgin Islands, very few of these guys representing the Virgin Islands today were born there, but at some point they had to have some relative in their ancient lineage that allows them to qualify as a representative of that spectacularly beautiful Caribbean island archipelago that, that consists of 60 plus islands, the main ones being St. John's, St. Croix, and St. Thomas. Pass batted away underneath. So Michael Red get a breather on the bench. Chauncey Billups in now along with Stoudemire, Mike Miller, and Tayshawn Prince. Here's Miller from outside. And Miller gets on the score sheet in the blink. 39 to 11. The last time, the only time that the Virgin Islands had played the United States, the game that Tim Duncan voluntarily stepped aside for, the United States won by 58 points without Tim Duncan. But my sense, I was part of He was a little self-conscious, didn't want to play against his countrymen. I understand think it's, so. I think it's a tremendous gesture to say, hey, look, that's my country, I don't want to go out there and pound them. But my sense is that Tim Duncan did not have a good time at the Athens Olympics. And as it's moved on and they've won more championships uh, since then, and, uh, I'm not sure if we're going to see Tim Duncan 
in the international competition anymore. I think he's done. He's done his job. Sadly, he did not get the gold medal that all these players so desperately crave. 39 to 13, you speak of the adjustments to international officiating. Tim Duncan in particular had a tough time with some of the calls made against him in Athens. And when you look at the tape and remember the games, you, you understand perfectly why. Darren Williams kicks it out to Tayshawn Prince. But this team has much better chemistry. Not only player to player chemistry, but player to coach chemistry. Here's Krauser. Krauser kicks it back out. Bowser, they call him Black Magic from the Rucker Leagues in the streets of New York. Here's Prince with the rebound. You have to be impressed with, with the job Krzyzewski, Nate McMillan, Mike D'Antoni, and Jim Beheim, the coaching staff for the United States has done here to get these guys so well prepared in a game where they pretty much think... The United States three-point marksmanship tonight has been on point as Chauncey Billups knocks down another one. You're watching the 2007 FIBA America's Championship from the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. The entertainment capital of the world and an entertaining one so far by the USA. Back with more right after this. Back at the Thomas and Mack Center, the first 10 minutes of the first quarter in the books, the United States leading 42 to 13. They were sizzling from the field, 76% shooting, including 8 of 10, Bill Walton, from behind the three-point arc. And that is a tremendous sign because last night they were 38%, which is a very good number, but... Even I, with my limited mathematical skills, can figure out and read the graphic that 8 for 10 is 80%. But last year, when the United States lost to Greece in the semifinals of the World Championship Tournament in Japan, they only shot 32% as a team in going down in monumental fashion to a red-hot Greek team. Virgin Islands with the ball, the jumper off the mark by Edwin, but he's fouled on the attempt. And getting back to that three-point shooting by the United States, Bill, as Darren Williams whistled for the foul, there's a bit of a rub there because, yes, it is a shorter distance, 20 feet 6 inches, as opposed to 23-9 in the NBA, but you can almost fall in love with taking it too much, can't you? And that that's the lure. That's what happens in college basketball all the time. That's pretty much a layup for anybody who's got a game whatsoever. I'm a big proponent, Mark, of standardizing all the rules yes. with the globalization of the game. But then you're talking about kingdoms, fiefdoms, giving up their power, giving up their identity. And with the NBA becoming the dominant force in every aspect of basketball, you have all these other entities saying, hey, we want to continue to receive our level of recognition, credit, respect, and cash disperses. Yes. Capitalism, one of the themes <laughs> worldwide, as Chauncey Billups was found going to the bucket. 42 to 15 with 9.28 to go in the second quarter. The United States will get the day off tomorrow, then resume against Canada. A game you'll see on ESPN, 3 o'clock on Saturday. Mike Miller has it swatted away. Williams goes to Omari Stoudemire. Stoudemire working the baseline and coming with the hammer. Little tap to finish it off on the glass. So stopping Amari Stoudemire as the United States has already just moved out to a nearly incalculable margin. And I think we have to start looking at record-setting territories for most points scored in a quarter, in a half, and quite possibly for an entire game. Because they're on a 168-point spread right now. And Certainly the fans would love to see that in a game played without Paul Westhead coaching. Wow, great extrapolation too, Bill. Your math. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> 44 to 15. I do yeah. know one part of that. Cuarenta minutos de infierno means 40 minutes of heck. Nolan Richardson is yes. coaching the undefeated Mexican team right now. He's got them playing down there. They beat Puerto Rico in their first game yesterday and looked very impressive doing it. They were in charge for most of that game, and here's one more look at Amari Stoudemire, who says, along with his assistant coach of the Phoenix Suns, uh, Phil Weber, that 
He's adding a three-point shot to the arsenal that he's seriously been working on this summer. This time, Amari underneath, fouled, and he'll get two at the free-throw line. Stoudemire saying that he can envision himself being, get this, Bill, the most improved player in the league next year, as well as finals MVP. Wonderful, lofty aspiration. I would love to see that be the most MVP the most improved and the MVP and another all-star and a league title but I do not want to see him ever take a three-point shot. Why? It's not his game. His game should be underneath the basket. They've got three but your They've thing. got Steve Nash. They've got Roger Bell who's not playing tonight because he's not on the roster. Just had knee surgery six weeks ago. Oh, the Virgin we, Islands, yeah. Right? And we really hope that Roger's going to be all right by the start of the regular season for Phoenix. Phoenix is an unconventional team, though. Doesn't that give them that much more of an added dimension to have your big be able to step out and shoot threes? They need low post presence, Mark. I mean, come on, enough of this Kevin Garnett saying I'm a forward. He's a center. Amari Stoudemire is a center. Get down there. Men are made in the paint. Oh, you're so conventional. Love you. <laughs> Carl Krauser with the jumper from outside makes it 45 to 18. Here's Mike Miller back the other way. Tayshaun Prince. A little two-man game here. Weak side with Williams. Good ball movement by the United States, and even though Miller can't cash in with the jump shot, they showed a lot of unselfishness on that possession. Here's Krauser for the Virgin Islands. Carl Krauser took Pitt to the NCAA tournament in four consecutive years. It's a three-on-one. No help for Krauser there as he watches Miller on the left-handed layup. But a nice job by the United States coming back, realizing that when there's only one defender back, keep the ball on the sideline. When there's two defenders in a fast break situation, then you keep it in the middle and get to the free throw line. Chauncey Billups just exquisite in running that break. On the baseline, nice move by Victor. Up for Victor. Approaching seven minutes to go here in the first half. The United States in control. But they've slowed down offensively. They have 42 points after the first 10 minutes, and now four minutes in to the second quarter, they've only scored five points total. They got that every 30 seconds of the opening quarter. Well, that's what happens when you set the bar pretty high in the first 10 minutes. Inside, ball knocked away, and then the Virgin Islands get it back. Try to go inside to Kidwana Reimer, and it's knocked away by Stoudemire. Well, the WNBA playoffs continue Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN2. Game 2 of the Western Conference matchup between the Sacramento Monarchs and the San Antonio Silver Stars. Two of the best players in the WNBA matchup as Kara Lawson leads the defending Western Conference champs Monarchs against Becky Hammond and the uh, homestanding Silver Stars. The WNBA playoffs on ESPN2, and what a difference Becky Hammond has made this year. A lot of people speculated that that trade to San Antonio from New York wouldn't benefit her, but it has been a blessing for both as Williams converts off the transition. And here I thought it was the time Becky spent as the sideline reporter <laughs> on the men's game. Oh, that inside, huh? Season. This past season to <laughs> NBA. 49 to 20, the United States in control. But the Virgin Islands part of the Greater Antilles chain of islands. They're located just east of Puerto Rico and about a thousand miles south of the furthest south point of Florida. Which makes for uh, an easy hop on a plane if you live in South Florida, like yours truly. Here's Jason Kipp bringing up court. A 29 point advantage. Kobe Bryant's been conspicuous by his silence and Tyson Chandler gets on the scoreboard which he failed to do last night in the game against Venezuela. Chandler brought in to add a little size and shot blocking for the United States. Chandler the only player for Krzyzewski's USA team that did not play in the first half last night. Browser with a nice move off the dribble to get the open pass and shot good by Jason Edwin. And what the advantage of all the depth does for the United States is that Nobody has to play too much, where as every other team with the limited roster capabilities, they're having to have a grind out struggle every single night. The Hall of Famer Mike Krzyzewski, who's been coaching U.S. national teams since 1979, this guy has a roster that anybody would just salivate over. 
Green trust on the USA sideline. Very impressive. The jump shot off the mark. And it doesn't even, the rebound. And it doesn't even include Chris Bosch or Dwayne Wade, who are both out with injuries. Darren Williams on fire right now. And speaking of Dwayne Wade, spent a little time with him a couple of weeks ago down in South Florida. And Wade recovering from surgery to his knee and his injured shoulder. The dislocated shoulder that he suffered in February against Houston says the shoulder is coming along fine along with the knee. And a jump shot good from the top of the key by Reimer. And Wade expects to be back in action on the court somewhere probably around the first week of November. Maybe a few games into the regular season. Time out on the floor. We'll be back with more after this. Welcome back, everyone, at the Thomas and Mack Center, the FIBA Tournament of the Americas Championship. The United States leading 53 to 25, and the emergence of Carmelo Anthony continues to be a big storyline. He has set a pace that no one else can match offensively. Now, Carmelo Anthony is one of only three players on the U.S. squad who played on the World Championship team that won the bronze medal. LeBron James, Dwight Howard being the other two. Carmelo Anthony also the only player on the U.S. roster who has an NCAA championship. Kobe Bryant, the only player who has an NBA championship. He's got three of those, courtesy of Shaquille O'Neal. As uh, Carmelo form a little triangle with Bryant now in the low blocks. Kobe Bryant. A little bit off the mark that time and rebounded by the Virgin Islands coming back in transition. It's Edwin. A little bit of complacency setting in, a little bit of relaxation after the blistering start. The United States scoring 42 first quarter points. My mathematical calculation shows that they've only scored 11 since then. There's Jim Herrick Sr., who is the father of the assistant coach for the Virgin Islands, Jim Herrick Jr. The last time uh, we heard a lot about the, the Herrick family was when they were coaching together in Georgia. That ended not so well. Now they're coaching together for the Bakersfield team and the NBDL. Can't believe you didn't use the prefix UCLA legend. He, he coached UCLA okay. to its last okay. NCAA Let's championship wait. in 1995. <laughs> Herrick and the head coach, Tavester Anderson. Things didn't end well at UCLA for Coach Herrick either. He threw to 27. Tavester Anderson, the head coach of this Virgin Islands team, has been their head coach dating back to 1985. Jason Kidd. Hey, who says that you can lay off Jason Kidd? Knocks down the perimeter jumper, makes it 58 to 27. But, but how about Jason Kidd? Last night, plays 15 minutes and doesn't take a shot. Is everybody else going? Just a dream point guard like Steve Nash, like Magic, like Lenny Wilkins. This has no interest in statistics, no interest in individual glory. It's all about the team with Jason. Carl Krauser gets hammered to the floor by Tyson Chandler. Let's get back to that Jason Kidd thing. Okay? We've all seen scouting reports that say you can lay off him a little bit. In the international game, next year, the United States say hypothetically playing against the Spain. Are they going to drop off him? Can you leave him out there with Jason, that scenario? With Jason Kidd, it's a day-to-day -day adventure on the jumper. The rest of his game, the defense, the rebounding, the passing, the intensity, the intangibles, it's always there. But some days, he looks like as great a shooting point guard as ever played. And in other games, you say, this guy can't even make a layup. And it's really remarkable, because we've been watching Jason since he was... Uh, a high school player in Oakland, California. And the fact that he hasn't been able to become a consistent shooter, it's, it's mind-boggling to me because we know so well how hard this guy works at every part of his game. And, and I'm intrigued to see if that's going to be the story of beautiful back cut pass. Kobe Bryant rejected at the rim. But Carmelo Anthony just zipping that ball in. I could be impressed with the way that they're moving the ball, Anthony going to the free throw line. But one of the limitations on LeBron James's game at this point is the inconsistent outside shot. And if Jason Kidd can't do it, that means that there are some guys who never get to the point where they can knock it down. Will LeBron James be one of those guys? Or as his game evolves, will he become one of the premier perimeter shooters? Meanwhile, you know, Jason Kidd now 29-0 as a member of the U.S. senior national teams. Remember, he was the captain of the Olympic team back in 2000 that won gold in Sydney, Australia. 
and this is the last successful international competition for the United States. And it was interesting that in the initial meeting back in July when the team got together for three days of minicamp, Jerry Colangelo stood up and spoke to the team en masse and said, hey, there's only one guy in here with a gold medal, and he pointed at Jason Kidd. He pointed out that Jason was undefeated, and Jason kind of only half-jokingly turned around to his teammates and pointed to them and said, hey, don't mess around with that record. Dwight Howard committing the foul on the play. 3.09 to go in the first half. But Jerry Colangelo, who's the head of this whole operation, a project for the United States to try to get back to their rightful position as he points it out. 20 years ago, Jerry Colangelo, after founding the Phoenix Suns in the late 1960s, Jerry Colangelo bought the entire team for $44.7 million. Just this past June, as he walked out the door as the head guy for the last time, as Robert Sarver takes over, with a purchase price of $401 million. That's quite an appreciation. Ten times in 20 years for the Phoenix Suns. What a franchise. That's a return on investment for sure. Three on two. Carmelo fouled and one. And they hacked by Eligar. And he'll get a chance to complete the three-point play off the good feed. Right now, this USA team is a monument to unselfishness. When it comes to ball movement here, LeBron with a look away. Well, all of the key guys really like passing the ball. Now, we're, we're, that caveat has an exemption with Kobe Bryant, who's never been accused of looking to give it up out there. Now, whether playing with Jason Kidd and LeBron and Carmelo will change that remains to be seen. 61 to 31, under three minutes to go here. I'm Mark Jones along with Bill Walton. The second game for the United States in the Tournament of the Americas. Last night they defeated Venezuela. Tonight on the docket, it's the Virgin Islands, and here's Kobe Bryant. The Virgin Islands, which were named Las Islas, Las Virgenes by Christopher Columbus back in the 15th century, as they named the Virgin Islands after St. Ursula in her 11,000 virgin companions and followers. So congratulations to St. Ursula. I'm just still impressed with your Spanish. It's wonderful, especially the uh, 40 minuto de inferno, the 40 minutes of heck. And uh, so far, this Mexican team, actually, one of the coached by Nolan Richardson, one of the good stories, feel good, warm and fuzzy stories of this term tournament of the Americas is Shepard goes to the free throw line off the foul. Spanish is my sixth language. Oh. After stammering, stuttering, stumbling, spitting, maybe a little bit of broken English, and then Spanish, having grown up on the California-Mexican border, right there in San Diego. 